1 Chronicles chapter 24 These were the divisions of the descendants of Aaron. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father did, and they had no sons. So Eleazar and Ithamar served as the priests. With the help of Zadok, a descendant of Eleazar, and Ahimelech, a descendant of Ithamar, David separated them into divisions for their appointed order of ministry. A larger number of leaders were found among Eleazar's descendants than among Ithamar's, and they were divided accordingly. Sixteen heads of families from Eleazar's descendants, and eight heads of families from Ithamar's descendants. They divided them impartially by casting lots, for there were officials of the sanctuary and officials of God among the descendants of both Eleazar and Ithamar. The scribe Shemaiah, son of Nathanel, a Levite, recorded their names in the presence of the king and of the officials. Zadok the priest, Ahimelech son of Abiathar, and the heads of families of the priests and of the Levites, one family being taken from Eleazar, and then one from Ithamar. The first lot fell to Jehoiarib, the second to Jediah, the third to Harim, the fourth to Seorim, the fifth to Malkijah, the sixth to Maijamin, the seventh to Hakoz, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jakim, the thirteenth to Hupa, the fourteenth to Jezebiab, the fifteenth to Bilgah, the sixteenth to Imma, the seventeenth to Heza, the eighteenth to Hapizez, the nineteenth to Petahiah, the twentieth to Jehezkel, the twenty-first to Jakin, the twenty-second to Gamul, the twenty-third to Deliah, and the twenty-fourth to Meaziah. This was their appointed order of ministering when they entered the temple of the Lord, according to the regulations prescribed for them by their ancestor Aaron, as the Lord the God of Israel had commanded him. As for the rest of the descendants of Levi, from the sons of Amran, Shubael, from the sons of Shubael, Jediah. As for Rehabiah, from his sons, Ishiah was the first. From the Isharites, Shalomoth. From the sons of Shalomoth, Jeha. The sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechameam the fourth. The son of Aziel, Micah. From the sons of Micah, Shema, the brother of Micah, Ishiah, from the sons of Ishiah, Zechariah, the sons of Merari, Malai and Meushai, the sons of Jehaziah, Bino, the sons of Merari, from Jehaziah, Bino, Shoham, Zakur, and Ibrai, from Malai, Eleazar, who had no sons, from Kish, the son of Kish, Jeramiel and the sons of Meushai, Malai, Eda, and Jeremoth. These were the Levites according to their families. They also cast lots, just as their relatives, the descendants of Aaron, did, in the presence of King David, and of Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of families of the priests and of the Levites. The families of the eldest brother were treated the same as those of the youngest. 1 Chronicles chapter 25 David, together with the commanders of the army, set apart some of the sons of Asaph, Heman, and Jeduthun for the ministry of prophesying, accompanied by harps, lyres, and cymbals. Here is the list of the men who performed this service. From the sons of Asaph, Zakur, Joseph, Nethaniah, and Azarelah. The sons of Asaph were under the supervision of Asaph, who prophesied under the king's supervision. As for Jeduthun and from his sons, Gedaliah, Zerai, Jeshiah, Shimei, Hashabiah, and Mattitiah, six in all, under the supervision of their father Jeduthun, who prophesied using the harp in thanking and praising the Lord. As for Heman, from his sons, Bukiah, Mataniah, 
Aziel, Shubael, and Jeremoth. Hananiah, Hanani, Eliatha, Gidaltai, and Romamtai Eza. Josh Pekesha, Malothai, Hota, and Mahazioth. All these were sons of Heman, the king's seer. They were given to him through the promises of God to exalt him. God gave Heman fourteen sons and three daughters. All these men were under the supervision of their father for the music of the temple of the Lord, with cymbals, lyres, and harps for the ministry of the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman were under the supervision of the king. Along with their relatives, all of them trained and skilled in music for the Lord, they numbered 288. Young and old alike, teacher as well as student, cast lots for their duties. The first lot, which was for Asaph, fell to Joseph, his sons and relatives, twelve. The second to Gedaliah, him and his relatives and sons, twelve. The third to Zakur, his sons and relatives, twelve. The fourth to Isri, his sons and relatives, twelve. The fifth to Nethaniah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The sixth to Bukiah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The seventh to Jezarela, his sons and relatives, twelve. The eighth to Jeshiah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The ninth to Mataniah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The tenth to Shimei, his sons and relatives, twelve. The eleventh to Azarel his sons and relatives, twelve. The twelfth to Hashabiah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The thirteenth to Shubael, his sons and relatives, twelve. The fourteenth to Mattatiah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The fifteenth to Jeremoth, his sons and relatives, twelve. The sixteenth to Hananiah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The seventeenth to Joshkabesha, his sons and relatives, twelve. The eighteenth to Hanani, his sons and relatives, twelve. The nineteenth to Melothai, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twentieth to Eliatha, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twenty-first to Hota, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twenty-second to Gidaltai, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twenty-third to Mahazioth, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twenty-fourth to Ramamtai Eza, his sons and relatives, Twelve. Acts, chapter 13 Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So, after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They travelled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimus and said, You are the child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time and not even able to see the light of the sun. Immediately, Mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, 
for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. From Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga in Pamphylia, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. From Perga they went on to Pisidian Antioch. On the Sabbath they entered the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Fellow Israelites and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of the people of Israel chose our ancestors. He made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power he led them out of that country. For about forty years he endured their conduct in the wilderness, and he overthrew seven nations in Canaan, giving their land to his people as their inheritance. All this took about four hundred and fifty years. After this God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king, and he gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled for forty years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Saviour Jesus, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his work, he said, Who do you suppose I am? I am not the one you are looking for, but there is one coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Fellow children of Abraham and you God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus, yet in condemning him they fulfilled the words of the prophet that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he was seen by those who had travelled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news. What God promised to our ancestors, He has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, You are my son. Today I have become your father. God raised Him from the dead so that He will never be subject to decay. As God has said, I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is also stated elsewhere, You will not let your Holy One see decay. Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin, a justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. Take care that what the prophets have said does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, wonder and perish, for I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe even if someone told you. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. And when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, 
we had to speak the word of God to you first. For since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region. The Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Psalm 143 Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. The enemy pursues me, he crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in the darkness like those long dead. So my spirit grows faint within me, my heart within me is dismayed. I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. I thirst for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I will be like those who go down to the pit. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord, for I hide myself in you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies. Destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. Proverbs chapter 19 Better the poor whose way of life is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? A person's own folly leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. Wealth attracts many friends, but even the closest friend of the poor person deserts them. A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will not go free. Many curry favor with a ruler, and everyone is the friend of one who gives gifts. The poor are shunned by all their relatives. How much more do their friends avoid them? Though the poor pursue them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. The one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will perish. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury. How much worse for a slave to rule over princes. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offence. A king's rage is like the roar of a lion, but his favour is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is a father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like the constant dripping of a leaky roof. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Laziness brings on deep sleep, and the shiftless go hungry. Whoever keeps commandments keeps their life, but whoever shows contempt for their ways will die. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. 
Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. A hot-tempered person must pay the penalty. Rescue them, and you will have to do it again. Listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end you will be counted among the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. What a person desires is unfailing love, better to be poor than a liar. The fear of the Lord leads to life, then one rests content, untouched by trouble. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He will not even bring it back to his mouth. Flog a mocker, and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke the discerning, and they will gain knowledge. Whoever robs their father and drives out their mother is a child who brings shame and disgrace. Stop listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. A corrupt witness mocks at justice, and the mouth of the wicked gulps down evil. Penalties are prepared for mockers, and beatings for the backs of fools.